hello friends in the previous video we have discussed different concepts used in laser now hereafter we shall discuss different types of laser there are different types of lasers hmm? solid state laser gas laser organic dye laser excimer laser different types of lasers are there so first we shall discuss ruby laser so what are the learning outcomes after watching this video students will be able to illustrate construction and working of ruby laser and state merits and demerits of ruby laser okay so all this discussion is related to co3 okay okay what is ruby Uh, ruby laser is a solid state laser because ruby is crystal we know ruby is naturally occurring red colored precious stone and what is its chemical composition it is al2o3 okay it is al2o3 with some of the al+3 ions okay it is Al2O3 with some of the Al+3 are replaced by Cr+3 and percentage of chromium is 0.05%. Okay, so this is the chemical composition of ruby and when we use it in laser, remember chromium is at active center means stimulated emission we get in chromium okay now you can see this figure huh? this is the construction you can see this is the it consists of a ruby rod this is the ruby rod it is long and thin rod okay its diameter is in millimeter less than 1 millimeter it is less than 1 millimeter and its length is in centimeter so it is long and thin rod hmm? its one end is semi silver semi silver means partly reflecting partly refracting hmm? see this is the actually end is circular this is the circular and i will show you here this is the central part hmm? see this part is reflecting and this central part is refracting okay so if i want to show here see here see see this part is reflecting this part is reflecting and only the central small part is transmitting so the laser beam will come out through this region okay is another end okay this is fully or totally silvered it is mirror i have written here it is totally silver means it is totally reflecting so any photon is in this direction it will be reflected back okay and it is surrounded by xenon discharge tube hmm? it is surrounded by xenon discharge tube okay and chromium we call it active center and we know the color of ruby it is red now why it is red because when chromium atom is excited to higher energy state it gives spontaneous emission and by spontaneous emission it gives red light and therefore it is naturally red in color okay so this is the construction of ruby laser okay it is the ruby rod one end semi silvered or the fully silvered it is surrounded by xenon discharge tube and by spontaneous emission chromium atom gives red light and therefore it is red okay now what is the working okay i have already discussed it so i will skip this slide and uh, one more thing uh, it is the ruby rod hmm? so it this crystal gets heated and therefore nitrogen we use as coolant uh, we can see here nitrogen we use as coolant okay remember this point hmm? and now we come to 
one reflection spot okay what is the type of pumping used in laser you may pause the video and answer this question think of this question see we have discussed construction and we have seen that xenon discharge tube is surrounded by the ruby rod now we know xenon discharge tube is source of light and thus we can say that we use optical pumping in ruby laser we use optic because we use light energy for excitation and therefore we say we use optical pumping okay now we come to working see this is the energy level diagram this is the energy level diagram i have shown three energy levels see this is the energy e3 and you can see here it is a band it is not a single energy level it is a band and it can absorb any energy in this range okay so this is the ground state this is the ground state and we can see here hmm, there is excitation from e1 to e3 there is excitation from e1 to e3 and you can see here it absorbs blue light and green light means in blue green region now e3 is excited it is highly unstable so atoms immediately come down to e2 it is metastable and its lifetime is 10 days to minus 3 second okay now as it continues hmm, see atoms from e1 to e3 e3 to e2 another atom e1 to e3 e3 to e2 hmm. if it continues we get n2 greater than n1 hmm. and we know it is population inversion okay so once we get the population inversion and if suitable suitable photon means this photon et e2 minus e1 hmm? if this photon is incident on the system it starts the stimulated emission once started the process continues and gives laser and characteristic wavelength of laser is this 6943 angstrom unit this is the characteristic wavelength and we know it is in rayed region hmm? we know 6943 it is rayed region so here we get rayed beam of light okay now here we use optical pumping and we use xenon discharge tube and xenon discharge tube is also called as a flash tube means when we start it it gives a flash so in one flash some of the atoms are excited okay in one flash some of the atoms are excited so if all the excited atoms come down in one flash whatever excited atom how many excited suppose n number of atoms are excited okay suppose n number of atoms are excited if all these n atoms come down okay they come to e2 and then e1 okay then stimulated emission will stop and laser beam ceases and again we can restart it by again flashing the tube and thus we can say that it is a pulse laser hmm? when we start the xenon discharge tube it gives one pulse so it is the pulse laser okay so what are the merits and demerits it is very strong intense beam and its output power is very high 10 days to 4 to 10 days to 6 watt it shows high degree of coherence means all the photons are perfectly in phase it is highly stable because we are using a crystal it is very hard crystal and it has high thermal conductivity it is a pulse laser and this is the drawback that it doesn't give the continuous 
lesser sometimes we require pulse so we can say it is a drawback as well as merit another drawback that to start a stimulated emission at least half number of ground state atoms must be excited to metastable okay and for that excitation we use only green color blue or green color so very small amount of input energy we are using therefore efficiency of this laser is very less okay but pumping energy we require very high huh? because laser transition terminates to ground state and we have to start from ground state huh? laser we have to start again from ground state huh? and therefore very high pumping energy is required and therefore again the efficiency is very less okay so friends uh, one more drawback it has that we have seen it gets heated and therefore it requires effective cooling system So this is about ruby laser. Thank you.